Share with me what you experienced as a child growing up with hearing and vision issues. And I'd like to get your mom's perspective as well. Yeah. I remember my parents telling me that I was born hearing. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. And later, when I was maybe two, give or take, the daycare teacher told my parents that I was not responding when um, someone talked to me from behind. And so she suspected that I had hearing loss. And of course my parents were concerned. Um, at that, up to that point, everything seemed like I was okay. So we went to the doctor, and uh, again, I'm about two or three at this time. We identified that I had a hearing loss, and I got hearing aids. Remember that? Yes. When Ashley was born, we thought she was just a perfect baby. And as time went on, we realized that she could not hear. So we took her to an audiologist, and he fitted her with little hearing aids. And um, we'd go back about every three months. And as we'd go back, her hearing would be decreased but there were never any answers as to why she was losing her hearing. Mm -hmm. I do remember that. You spent a lot of time working with me um, so that I could put my hearing aids in. You know, I was young. I didn't want to keep them in. So you worked with me. You showed me how to care for my hearing aids, how to change the batteries. I do remember all the time and energy you spent with me, with my hearing aids. And eventually I got to the point where I loved having them in. I loved hearing the environmental noises around me. And because when I didn't have my hearing aids on, I couldn't hear anything. So I got to the point where I did wear them all day long and only took them out at night or if I was in the water. I remember listening to music, listening to the radio. I was able to understand what I was hearing on the radio. And I know that I spent hours sitting in my mother's lap just listening to you read to me. I remember that fondly. I would read to Ashley all the time. And she just had a love for books. She loved to read. Mm -hmm. And when she got um, old enough to go to school, she was fitted with an auditory trainer, which she did not like. It made her more different from the other children, and she just hated to wear it, but she could hear the teacher better. And I remember her telling the teacher after lunch, would you please put on more lipstick? And then we learned she was reading lips. So she was doing everything she could do to, to make it work. Mm hmm I remember, yes. That was when I was in the public school, and I did not have an interpreter, and I remember the auditory trainer. It was heavy. I had to wear it around my neck. And I remember all the kids looking at me. And the teacher would turn her back to me to write on the board. And I couldn't lip read. And I missed a lot of information. I missed also what my classmates were saying. And so from kindergarten up until fourth grade was when I attended the public school without an interpreter. And then eventually, you, Mom, were an advocate for me um, to get a teacher's aide who was with me one-on-one -on -one all day. The teacher's aide was there mostly for the purpose of assisting with communication so I could communicate with other students and be aware of any information that I missed. But that aide did not know sign language. So we did not communicate in sign language, though we st began learning sign language together. We used the book, The Joy of Signing, and I remember sitting down together and trying to learn some of the signs together. Neither one of us knew what we were doing. But that was the teacher aide's role, to make sure that I was aware of information and communication that I was missing. Yeah, they were trying, but they just didn't have the training that they needed to work with a hearing impaired child. Um, she'd come home from school so unhappy about this um, auditory trainer, she'd say the children were talking about her because she, she'd see them talking to each other and and she couldn't understand what they were saying and she just thought they were talking about her so 
she was really doing well in her studies, in her schoolwork, but she was struggling with her social life. Yeah, I think I was more comfortable with the academics of school, but not necessarily the socialization aspect. I did everything that I could to stay up to speed with the, the academics. Um, I remember having to do lots of homework, um, looking at the board to see what was due the next day so that I could come home and focus on doing my schoolwork. But there was a lot of information that I was missing, especially the socialization with my classmates. And that was a struggle. But that's how it happened um, in the early parts of my education. And then we started looking for other options. I remember, Mom, do you remember going to visit the School for the Deaf? There was the day that we went, it happened to be a field trip day, and they took the students to a teacher's home for a cookout or something like that. And I remember how much fun it looked like. And um, yeah, it was amazing. Then we went back to the school, and there was the dorm, and I was um, looking at the school like an adventure and how everyone could sign to one another and communicate, and they stay overnight in the dorm, and it just looked like lot of fun. And then when you and dad asked if I wanted to go to that school or not, I was like, absolutely, I want to go.